Good evening and welcome back to 31 Horror Nights. It's October 19th and tonight's movie is Death of a Vlogger. This is a found footage slash camera point of view a movie from the UK about a YouTuber, I guess, who starts experiencing paranormal activity in his apartment and tries to prove that it's real. Then again, I don't remember them saying YouTuber in the trailer, so maybe they pulled a followed and created a new website. While we're on that subject, it seems to go into the themes of Fallout and Gonjiam and I guess Horror in the High Desert with the thing about influencer culture. The trailer even featured the line, we live in a post-truth society. Wouldn't it be funny if he doesn't actually die at the end and the title was just clickbait? Actually, I don't know if that would be clever or really terrible. Actually, now I'm thinking about one of these movies where the guy behind the camera actually fakes his own death for clout. Oh, wait a minute, Jay Station kind of did that already. I hope I'm not accidentally predicting what's going to happen in this movie. From what I can tell, at the very least, the catalyst of believing that his apartment is haunted was something that he didn't set up, so maybe he's not going to fake it till he makes it. I'm going to go watch Death of a Vlogger and see what happens. Gee, I hope he's okay. Oh my gosh. That was amazing. I'm gonna do it. Death of a Vlogger gets a 10 out of 10. I would put this in the same category as Butterfly Kisses, a movie that uses the found footage format to its absolute best. Freaking slow claps for writer slash director slash star Graham Hughes. This was everything I wanted and more. Where to even begin with this movie? Well, I guess I can start out with the um, fact that this movie feels like it's made by people who really know the internet more so than Followed. Because Followed did talk about internet culture, but it was from a very, for lack of a better term, boomer perspective. This feels like it was made by people who have been on YouTube for the past five years or so. There's a point where one of the characters has to make a YouTuber apology video and they hit the nail right on the head. They got all the tropes, they got the subtle blame shifting, they got the staring wide-eyed directly at the camera. And I'm pretty sure that they used a direct quote from Logan Paul's Suicide Forest apology video, My intention has always been to entertain. I'm really hesitant to tell you anything about this story because I really don't want to spoil it. A lot like Butterfly Kisses, as the movie kept going, it kept getting more interesting. More things were being uncovered. There were more mysteries, more epiphanies. Ending it all with the only correct way to end this movie. The acting in this movie is phenomenal. Uh, the vlogger in question, his name is Graham in the movie too, his girlfriend Erin was being interviewed for this. And she had some really good moments. Graham also was amazing in this movie. I think I was expecting Graham's character to be like, I think it was called Drop the Mic from Followed, where he was just absolute full-blown jackass at the beginning, and then slowly as the movie goes on, he gets better and better. Here, it was more of a mixture. There definitely was a character that fit that personality type exactly, but it wasn't Graham, it was somebody else. His name was Steve, and the acting and writing for this character was just brilliant. His ego is so huge, it's completely overtaken his entire personality, and it's blinded him to the fact that nobody likes him or believes him. Even when he's being interviewed and being faced with evidence of his lies, he doesn't stop lying. I think we can all think of YouTubers that this guy reminds us of. The horror is also very well done in this movie. There's really great effects. It also had a lot of really clever callback moments where they'll remind you of things in the movie that you don't really remember, but once they put it in context, you went, oh, that was important. Once again, just like Butterfly Kisses, it almost feels like a movie about itself. And that is very interesting to me. So if you like found footage or want to get into found footage or don't think found footage is good, check this movie out. You might really love it and it might even change your mind. I don't know. And now I really, really, really want to talk about the spoilers of this movie. The first big twist of the movie occurs about halfway through. 
There are a few videos of paranormal activity happening in the apartment and these aren't like normal, ooh, something moved or ooh, I heard a voice. This is like horror movie stuff happening in this apartment. And there's this investigative reporter who specializes in debunking stuff like this. In fact, this documentary is apparently being run by some woman. We never see her face or I don't think we even hear her name, but the person making this documentary goes to... The reporter, her name was Alice, that goes to her house and she gives this backstory about this doll that she has, about how people thought it was haunted and she was able to prove that it was just a prank. And then the doll does stuff like moving on its own and falling off on its own. And Alice like says, I faked that just to show you how easy it is. And then the documentarian asks her, like, so was that whole story fake? And then she looks at her with this weird look and goes, yeah. Just a perfect moment of blatant irony for this truth finder just casually lying. She brings a hidden camera to an interview and she's able to catch Graham saying, if they find out we fake this, we're in big trouble. So obviously Alice published that, I think the very same day. And yeah, the entire internet turned on Graham. For some reason, not a lot of hate was going towards Steve or his girlfriend Erin, even though both of them were, if not active accomplices, they were definitely complicit in it. But yeah, the internet reared its ugly head right at Graham and he slips into a depressive spiral. However, real paranormal activity starts happening at his apartment and nobody believes him. They can't even believe it when he shows them video of it. He is now the boy who cried ghost. Nobody has any reason to believe him and anything he tries just makes things worse. I don't want to just summarize the movie. So let's just say that things do indeed just keep getting worse. And it ends with Graham falling or getting pushed down a flight of stairs. But that didn't kill him. He was injured, but he made it out of it. He completely just got off social media. He went to rehab, I guess, to sort of help his social media addiction. And apparently he's doing fine. And I kind of thought they were going to end it there, even though that kind of leaves the question as to why this movie is called Death of a Vlogger. Then, this is this was amazing. Alice says that she was reviewing the footage that was, I guess, given to the documentarians. I don't know how the footage of all the stuff after the f- reveal of the fake was um, like brought to people's attention. But anyway, Alice is able to find weird things in that footage too, like the reflection of Aaron's face in a window, even though apparently Graham hadn't seen her in weeks and was telling the camera that. Or like when hands come out of a wall to grab him, they're wearing the same rings that Aaron was wearing just earlier that day. Signs are pointing to all of this being staged from the beginning. And it literally just occurred to me now that that would explain why they were filming themselves all the time. Graham was still off the grid at that point, so the documentarian confronts both Steve and Aaron about this, and both of them completely deny it. Erin's reaction was especially interesting. She said a few things that might sound familiar to you if you've watched YouTuber apology videos. Like, I know what's true about me. I can't change people's minds. People are allowed to believe what they believe. I know my truth. Though in the movie, I assure you that those blatant manipulation tactics were actually employed subtly. And again, I almost was expecting them to end there. But again, why is it called Death of a Vlogger? Apparently, while this documentary was in post-production, Graham finally came out of the woodwork and livestreamed for the first time in a while. He looks at the camera with these big old wide eyes and says, I'm gonna do the only thing that'll make you believe me. Then he takes a bed sheet and tries to use it as a noose to hang himself, even though you see rope in his apartment. The way he tried to hang himself was very odd too. He didn't stand on a chair and then jump off it. He like got on his tiptoes and bent his knees so that he was hanging. It occurred to me, once again, like a minute ago, that he probably was trying to fake hanging himself. But then again, on the other other hand, what was his plan? To just pass out and die? Like, that doesn't make sense either. But then, he falls down and he doesn't move, and apparently, he just lays there until the laptop that was recording, its battery runs out. There's text that says that his body was never found. But you also hear laughing that was very prominent during the haunting footage, and you see a piece of paper blow on its own, so I guess it's ambiguous. Was it real? How much of it was real? Did he fake his own death? The world will never know. And that's exactly how it should be. That is how you do an ambiguous ending right. 
I just want more people to watch this movie. This was delightful. I loved it. Found footage movies like this are just so good. And I'll see you tomorrow.